oh, the meta in Genshin changed. I wouldn't say the meta in Genshin changed. Characters coming out are stronger than the previous one. That's power creep. But the previous characters are still able to clear the content. And since there's no leaderboard or no PvP, it doesn't matter. Subscribe, please! Hi, so I've been sent this video, I've been asked to uh, have a look, give my take, give my opinion on the topic, and it's a video from Seorg, which I um, I really like, I'm subscribed to him, and I generally watch his videos, I haven't watched this one yet, so I'm very curious. Uh, the problem with meta in gacha games, let's have a look, sis. Yo, meta in gacha games was and still is a really complicated topic that people are always talking about with any gacha game. And in any gacha game... I mean, I, I think people talk about meta in almost every single game. Um, as soon as there was like, oh, like, an, because meta just means the most efficient way to play the game, right? Um, and and the, the things that people, even if they don't use the term meta for every single game, it always happens. It happens in PvP game, obviously. It happens in any kind of game where you can essentially compare yourself to others. Uh, but it's always going to be the case when there is an amount of uh, team building or just character building. If you have some amount of customization when it comes to your character or your team, people are going to be talking about meta. I mean, they, they people do the same with Elden Ring, about like, oh, what you should be playing or what's too OP and doesn't count. It makes sense in PvP game though, not in most catchy game. Yeah, absolutely. And even in PvP, I think it only matters to some extent, right? It matters if you're trying to grind hard and actually reach like high levels, right? Um, or it matters in when you're playing actually competitively speaking, right? But like if you're just playing casually, which all gacha games are, all gacha games are casual games, then it doesn't really matter. Now, I think that if you want to know how to build a character or a team, it's interesting to have the information out there, but it should never be forced into someone. You will always find that one problem in the meta. So today we will examine gacha games. Three of them will be our main talking point and see if we can find the right way to make meta good in a gacha game. Maybe some okay. games are destroying themselves or a game that decides to twist it and fix the whole thing. Which by the way, have you heard of the hit game Blue Archive? Well, me too. And this video is sponsored by Blue Archive. I play it every day. It's sick. a mobile RPG gacha game. You take on the role of sense. Blue Archive is actually pretty good. I've been enjoying it a lot and it was kind of crazy to me uh, even friends of mine when uh, people were talking about the upcoming collaboration uh, for Nikkei people were like okay so it's either gonna be Blue Archive or it's gonna be Evangelion uh, when the first um, teaser came out uh, and it was still a bit open uh, up in the air because we just knew that there was gonna be students and I had friends of mine being like I hope to God it's not going to be Blue Archive. I don't want it to be Blue Archive. Please don't ruin the game with Blue Archive. And they were freaking out. And that's because, like, I think the fucking insane portion of the community in Blue Archive that, like, super into Lolly and the whole, like, cunny thing, it's just fucking weird. And um, the game itself is kind of chill about it, to be honest. I mean, yeah, you're supposed to be the sensei and obviously all the fucking students like you. But it's not like they seem to like you in a sexual way or anything. They just seem to like you in general. Um, just like as, as good, like, you have a good relationship with your students. Some of them may be, but like, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, and I, I don't feel like the character has sexualized in any way. Um, so I don't really know. I feel like it's just like a very bad uh, side of the community that's like absolutely horrendous. And then, you know, people extrapolate and they you know, group everyone together, which, I mean, makes sense, right? All the F on Evangelion, the old anime. Isn't that shit dead yet? What do you mean? Evangelion is incredibly popular, and they do collab with a lot of gacha games. 
Uh, so yeah, anyway. Say an advisor of the Federal Investigation Club, where you resolve the endless I think the game is actually pretty fun and pretty Academy chill. The story is pretty good. one of the most popular gacha games in the world, and especially in Japan and Korea. It has achieved the top spot in sales in Japan multiple times, and it actually has a TV anime airing. You battle with 3D cute chibi characters. I haven't watched it. I intend to. I'll let you know what I think and when I do. I'm actually currently playing the game, and it's so fun. The game keeps updating content every time, and currently there are new events and new content coming soon. You can get a skin for the character Hina or a dress, and currently the three star chance are getting doubled. So we will have more chance to recruit more characters, and these events will start from the 13th of July to the 5th of August. Make sure to click on the link in the description and pin comment to download the Blue Archive now. So the three games will be Genshin, Honka Sariel, and Tower Fantasy. First off, let's go with Genshin. And Genshin Impact has one of the most interesting routes in terms of meta. And you will know why after I talk okay. about the other games. So the Genshin meta was overall balanced from the start until Fontaine. They released some OP characters from the start, having a Biganyu, Zhongli, Hu Tao, the Raiden Shogun, very powerful four-star characters like Bennett and Xian Ling. And the more characters they add with the game, they rarely add a bad character. For example, they made Ayaka and the comparisons between... I mean, I think the problem is that, like, there's really no point in talking about meta in a game that's not challenging. Like, I mean, you could say... I think this is more of a power creep kind of issue than a meta issue. Like, a meta... Like, to me, the meta is, like, if you... I don't know how to say it. Because to me, essentially, the idea... Uh, let me just... Oh, yeah, Pose somewhere else because this there, is although the diff there. It is perfect. Ganyu smiling to me, uh, very happy. So to me, the the idea of meta, like when you play a PvP game, like a team PvP game, like League of Legends or Overwatch or games like that, when there is a meta, it's just that people find that the team combination is simply incredibly strong, right? It's the strongest team at the moment, and then you have some characters that function against some of those characters. And so people try to counter each other or they, there's not like a, a strong counter to said meta. So both teams have to play the same, right? So let's say in Overwatch for the longest time, there was a triple tank meta. And so both teams had to play triple tank because there wasn't a way to play around it or to counter it. So people had to play triple tank against triple tank, uh, which was super stale for a long time. In League of Legends... Sometimes, you, for a long time, you had a hyper-carry mid-lane assassin meta, so everyone was playing Zed, LeBlanc, stuff like that. Eventually, mid-lane ended up, like, the way that character worked is that um, bruisers got, like, incredibly buff. So you had uh, a top-line heavy, like, split-pushing meta with, like, very strong hard carries, and you needed them to, like, start... Um, you know, snowball into a strong position. So they shifted toward having more support type uh, characters in mid lane that would be able to roam more easily to give advantage to the top lane, right? Um, but this is a PvE. There's no countering you. So like, if you don't play the most efficient, the strongest character in the game, nothing bad happens to you. It's not like if you don't, you lose. You don't lose. So I don't think Genshin, in this situation, like, it, there's no sense talking about it because there is literally no hard content. You can play anything and you can get 36 star in the Abyss. Like, yeah, you'll need to build your characters, but you can do the Abyss with, four, like, with just four stars. Like the, the national team with, like, uh, Bennett, Shangling... Um, Xing Shuo and just any other character and you can literally clear. And there's, there's no leaderboard in Genshin. There's no leaderboard. You can take a screenshot and be like, oh, look at that, I did a speed run. But, I mean, sure, but who cares, right? Most people don't care, especially because it's a casual game. Um, so, for Genshin specifically here, this is not really a meta. This is strictly about, like, power creep. And I think when it comes to gacha game, there is almost always going to be some amount of power creep, at least in Hoyo games, right? Um, 
like part two Valkyries or like uh, Path seven Valkyries are way better than part like beginning of part one Honkai Impact third Valky uh, Valkyries. Um, right now we're seeing a shift where characters that are coming out in 2.x in HSR are stronger than characters that came out in 1.x, right? This just happened. And the idea is that they want to sell you characters. And if every single character is as strong as the previous, well, people are not going to be incentivized to get new characters. And I think you can talk about power creep, and it's more important to talk about power creep in the games like Star Rail, because the game is actually getting harder and harder. Uh, you used to be able to do like 15 cycle of something in um, in the MOC, but now it's only 10 cycles. And monsters are getting tankier and tankier, even in pure fiction. So now the game becomes harder. And if you don't have stronger character or better build character, you are going to suffer from it. But Genshin, the difficulty has almost never changed. Sometimes the Abyss is slightly harder because there's a monster that's annoying, but it's not like the monster is annoying against your team specifically. The monster is annoying because it goes onto the ground and then he has a phase of invulnerability. It is a meta though. I think character being stronger, I wouldn't really call it a meta. To me, a meta is like a strongest type of team. Um, because it's the most efficient way to play. A character being stronger than another character is just a power creep. So to me, that's why I think when people are saying, oh, the meta in Genshin changed, I wouldn't say the meta in Genshin changed. Character coming out are stronger than the previous one. That's power creep. But the previous characters are still able to clear the content. And since there's no leaderboard or no PvP, it doesn't matter. Prince wasn't that big. There's comparisons between Yoimiya and Hotel. There's no big difference too. And sometimes they make a character mid and they buff the character enough to be there in the meta. So the meta was like that for years. Power creep wasn't really a thing. Of course, we saw some insanely powerful supports like Kazuha, but we also had Nahida. So the good points about this meta is that it makes you have the ability to use any character that you like with really not caring much about the meta and instead of pulling for the meta only now you pull more for the gameplay and the strategies that the character give you and of course the character design so what Hoyerverse had to do is make a new character with greater gameplay or new gameplay mechanics that make this character work without really power creeping things now i want you to remember how this meta was because there is a twist in this video i want you to hold up with genshin with fontaine and potentially Na like to me a meta is not a character being stronger than the previous version. Like, Aulokino being stronger than Hu Tao and Yoimiya is not a shift in the meta. A shift in the meta, to me, is the release of Sumeru and the Dendro. When Dendro came out, there was a massive shift in the meta because suddenly, Dendro reactions were very good. And the reason why they're very good, by the way, Dendro reaction are not the strongest in the game. The strongest teams in the game are not Dendro. But what Dendro allows you, because Dendro works through elemental mastery, is that they are easy to build. It's like in HSR, dot teams are easier to build because you don't need crit rates. So the amount of stats that you need is less obnoxious to farm for, because you only want a little bit of effect hit rate, Attack percentage and speed, and that's it. Meanwhile, if you play a crit DPS in HSR, you need attack, you need speed, you need crit rate and crit damage, and so suddenly you have way more stats that you need to build, and it makes them harder. Dendro made it so anybody with some okay, decently built character can actually clear the content way easier. But the ceiling of Dendro is actually lower than the ceiling of other teams. Uh, another meta shift that did happen is that more and more enemies are immune to being frozen. So during the time of 1.0 and 2.0, 2.x patches, a lot of the enemies were able to be frozen. And so characters like Ganyu, characters like Ayaka, 
were very, very good because they were actually able to just permanently CC the enemies. They were getting some buff to their crit rates, etc., etc. When Subaru came out and Dendro came out, Dendro doesn't have a special reaction with um, Glacio, with Cryo. So suddenly you have more enemies that can't be frozen. And on top of it, the new strong element doesn't work with, Gla with Cryo, sorry. And so, well, unfortunately, Cryo characters started to feel worse to play. That's a shift in meta. But like, yeah, I, apart from that, there's not really much to say. And it doesn't mean you can't play Cryo team or you can't play Freeze team anymore. But yeah, they're not as good as they used to be. They're not the most efficient way to play. But I think there is, while power creep tends to sometimes affect the meta, with, for example, Farina coming out, because she's so strong, she elevates previously forgotten characters to new heights, I think that changes the meta, but it, it allows you to build new team. Xinyan allows you to play plunge. Uh, so she brings a new type of team composition to the game, right? That I agree. But like, yeah, two characters that do the same thing, but one has bigger numbers is not a change in meta. Atlan, because before we talk about that, let's go to Honkai Star Rail. Now, Honkai Star Rail's meta is very different. At the start, I agree. Honkai Star Rail was doing a little by little power creep. So they make a character after two or three. So, um... Again, I think the idea of um, power creep and meta, while it changes which character are better with power creep, it doesn't change the core of the team. To me, a meta in Star Rail is going from hyper carry to um, dot to dual carry full up attack teams to super break to whatever is going to come next, right? Those are changes in meta. Kafka being stronger than, like, I don't know, being stronger than Sampo is not a change in the meta, right? But when Black Swan came out, suddenly dot teams were the best shit ever. That's the difference. That's, that's a character that is actually going to change which teams are the best, potentially, or the more comfortable to play. On top of it, I will say that in Star Rail, there is way more characters, way more enemies that will push a certain type of team forward, right? Um, and because the game is a bit more challenging, it's not because the game is particularly hard, but the difficulty of Genshin versus HSR is that in games like Genshin, that's like action combat, there is way more potential player expression that's possible and skill expression that even if your team is a bit subpar or your stat is subpar, you can still clear the content. In Star Rail, because it's a turn-based combat, while yes, there's going to be a difference between a very good player that knows exactly how the intricacies of the character's kit function with the other character in the team, at the end of the day, there is some amount of stat check. If you don't have enough attack, the enemy is not going to die. That's it. So yeah, when you have new content that comes out like pure fiction and you don't have any characters that can do big, fast AoE attack, you're going to suffer. If there's a new game mode like Apocalyptic, Apocalyptic Shadow that comes out and you don't have good teams that can break the enemy's toughness bar fast, you're going to suffer. Those are changes in meta caused by new game mode being added to the game patches there's a new character of the same role that has like 10 percent more damage or 10 percent more value 20 percent sometimes now what's good about this is that honkai star rail makes you have another reason compared to genshin impact to get a new character you get this character to make your account better because the like I, I feel like most people are not actually going to be pulling for a character because it's 10 percent stronger i feel like people will pull for a character if it's like 15 to 25 percent stronger right if Acheron was 5 or 10% stronger than Scylla people would not be pulling for her but Acheron is like a 40% damage upgrade so people pull for her on top of being like able to actually like break any type of enemy right that's why people pull for those characters 
when the power creep is so large that the new character can destroy the entire game. Yes, that creates a new meta. But a simple 10% power creep does not change anything. That's my opinion. Content in the game is getting harder and harder with the time. Combine that with cool abilities and animations, and of course design. If we look at it from business perspective, this character has more potential to yeah, the, sell uh, more. The, um, animation power creep. did outsell Genshin a lot, Plus and it's daily? outselling Genshin uh, now. A bit. So what Genshin Impact did is start following the Honkai Star Rail route in 4.0 in Fontaine. We had New Valette topping off any other Hydro character by a whole margin, becoming yeah, fair. the best main DPS in the game and then straight up we get a Farina outscaling any other support because she does damage and support better than them. They gave her a very powerful kit that you Farina is literally the best character in the game. Earlier I said Hu Tao and Yoimiya but Arlequino blows him out of the game. Cloran also was a very I mean yeah she's better but not by that far. Like the difference between Arlequino versus Hu Tao is not the same as the difference between, I don't know, like, Furina and Mona. <laughs> or like, Furina and Shinshu, or whatever. Furina literally makes any character good. Like, literally. Powerful electro damage dealer, but there is still differences between Genshin and HSR because Genshin wasn't getting harder with the time. Sure, the Abyss yep. was getting some changes, but it fully wasn't agree. That He's hard right. For the game does not get harder. To clear it. But going back to HSR, HSR instead of just adding more powerful characters, they also added dedicated yep. modes for characters that are probably mid or any other role overall, and that was a big W for HSR for a long Agreed. time, for almost a year. The simulated universe to pure fiction they were adding more and more content while making it a little more harder and making characters that got power crept go to another mode people didn't complain much the characters were very fun and everything was still good and now i know that you want me to talk about firefly okay. and acheron for having an absurd amount of damage because when these characters came out a lot of people started seeing some problems with the meta but what if i I think the problem with them is not necessarily the amount of damage they do, it's just the fact that they can bypass core mechanic of the game. I, I think that's the issue, quote unquote the issue, um, because you can just brute force the game with them. Um, because all the characters that are very, very strong and can deal like an insane amount of damage, generally speaking, they still need to be, they will obviously do way more poorly uh, against enemies that don't have weakness to their elements, right? But Acheron can break any element with an ultimate, any, any weakness type, and uh, characters like Boot Heal and Firefly can just implant a weakness to the enemy. So anybody can be become weak to them, right? And I think that's what people are a bit worried about, and it's that those characters are so strong uh, that they are just... You can plug plug and play them against any type of content, right? There are some exceptions when it comes to toughness break. Like, there are some enemies that enter some phases where they can't lose toughness, um, their toughness bar at all. Um, so, yeah, th there is some small exception, but compared to other characters, it's, like, minimal. I tell you, they are not the problem, actually. And it's not about the modes. There's one character that everybody should know Rumei. that started changing yep. everything with the game. Ruan Mei. This character changed the game forever. And that's Absolutely. the first mistake that a lot of gachas do. A broken support. Not True. only that, they kind of made the new characters also centered around Ruan Mei. You can also see that these powerful characters, or the characters that you call power creep the game, also work with Ruan Mei. They kinda need Ruan Mei. So the new characters can use Ruan Mei, but some of the older ones won't be able to. So a character like Zila, for example, now is kinda having some hard time in the game. She still, of course, can clear the content, but it's way harder compared to the others. And then we started to see another flow. You cannot nerf characters. Like, come on, we all know that you cannot do that, you know? People who spent money on a character that is so powerful and then they find 
Who got nerfed in So the damage numbers in gacha games are only going up because oh. they can buff characters. That's the difference. They do that by adding more and more yeah. bets and also supports that can make all their characters shine again. For example, if we talk about Sparkle, she made them buy better Lune way better and got him back yeah. in the meta. And that's the way they can fix it by adding new characters and new set that can make all their characters better. And we will still get more and more power creep and fix it with new Hon supports or new DPSs to work with older support. Honestly, the, the problem with this idea that like new characters are going to make older characters better is that like, yes, that's true. But you know who those new characters are going to make stronger? The other new characters. <laughs> Like, a character that comes out and makes Silly better is probably going to make Akron better too. So, like, you can take a character from 10 to 20, but if it also takes a character from 80 to 90, maybe you should stick with the character that, that is at 80, you know what I mean? Um, I think if you're playing gacha game, you just got to learn that power creep is going to happen. And yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's how the monetization system works, right? Um, I, I think it's not a big deal. Everybody who's free to play can get a new character every patch, basically, right? Um, and so you can keep up with the meta. It's not really a big, big issue, in my opinion. Yeah, it kind of sucks to see Silly being bad. But I think the only... I think, honestly, the best way to get those old character back into the meta is just to give them an alternate form. I, I, I think this is literally the best way. I actually really like Honkai Pack 3rd for this is that the old character get new battle suits. There it is. So right now we have like part two and part two has a lot of very strong characters coming in and uh, they are just gonna be adding new version of all the characters. Okay, gave them a retrofit, it's the same thing. It's a new version of the character, right? Um, and I think that's awesome because it's like, okay, I really like Scylla and just, she's been like uses for a long time, but they are going to be adding a new Scylla battle suit. So maybe in the future they can add a HSR Scylla version 2, like an Imbibitel Lune for Scylla, where she's like, maybe she taps into the, the Quantum Sea or something, or she changes form to Voloray or something like that. That could be absolutely awesome. Um, but yeah, I think they probably don't want to focus on trying to make all the character better when they could just focus on making new awesome characters because, I mean, at the end of the day, People who like Scylla, they're kind of over it at this point. Uh, I, I don't think people are going to be super excited if they buff a pre-existing character. They just want to see them with a new fucking outfit. You know, they, they want to see Scylla with a new outfit, a new path, a new something, you know. And uh, there's been rumors that we might get characters like this in the future, like Kafka with a new path. Like, uh, and I think that's going to be awesome, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of my thought on the topic. Um, I, I don't think it's really the end of the world. Like, it, it's not really... Um, I, I don't think it's really worth trying so hard to make all the character not obsolete. Because uh, it's a lot of effort for not that much gain, in my opinion. Like, if they somehow buff Scylla, do you think people are going to spend like as much money on the next Scylla rerun compared to the first time she came out? No, of course not. Too. So this loop is still the best in terms of business because you will always sell with new characters. You either get a character yep. to buff your old characters or get a new character because it's just stronger. But yep. from a player's perspective, this is kind of annoying. The reason is this is a gacha game and people do pull on characters that they like. Uh, I agree with that. I, I agree. With that. It's annoying to see your favorite characters become obsolete over the time. I do agree with this, but also, I mean, you know what you're getting into. I, like, I understand if this was annoying people in like five years ago or four years ago, right? I understand if they were like, oh my God, this is so annoying. I can't believe they're doing this because people didn't know Gacha game back then. It was not as mainstream. So I feel like, yeah, people could be upset or not used to, but now everybody knows what a Gacha game is. Literally everybody knows. When you start a gacha game, you can't look at like fucking like Ellen Drew and be like, oh my god, Ellen Drew is gonna be good forever. Nah, everybody knows that Ellen Drew is not gonna be good forever. She's very good right now, but she's gonna be power crept. It is what it is. 
hey, maybe she'll get lucky and somehow she'll stay relevant for like six months or a year or a year and a half. But at some point, she's going to be weak. People should know that. And I think if it upsets you, unfortunately, gacha games are just not going to be for you. That's my opinion. Maybe that's a bit harsh. I understand. But I think, hey, just let it go. Just fucking let go. Let go. It's fine. It's fine. You can have your character. You can play her. She's going to be good enough to collect some content. And why do you care if other characters are stronger? I mean, some people fucking love Scylla in HSR and they still play her and do zero cycle in MOC. So it's possible. Stop looking at each other, at other people. Although I will say, I think what's a bit obnoxious sometimes, it's chat trying to force the meta on you. They're like, oh, were you playing Scylla? You should play Acheron, she's way better. That's kind of annoying. But let's be real, those people are just annoying. And that's something that happens. Like if you do YouTube video or streaming or stuff like that, or you have a friend that like harass you because you're not playing the most efficient way, right? But like, just play what you want to play, dude. It's not that deep. Of course, a lot of people care about meta, but you also want to get be a like Senti. That... Well, the difference with Senti is that she's a support, right? And like Bronya, she's still very good in the game. And even though Sparkle is strong and stronger in some aspects, Bronya um, still has the niche that she's, she does have the 100% advance forward, right? Which is still very, very relevant and very, very good for some team comp com compositions, right? Sensi, the thing with her uh, in Hong Kong Impact 3rd, is that she was able to play as a DPS, but she had abilities that allowed her to empower the rest of her team. So even when she became less relevant as a DPS, she was still relevant as a support. Like today, um, for example, in Genshin, Frida is so strong, her DPS is crazy. But even at some point, if characters have better DPS than she does, her buff is so powerful that it doesn't matter that the DPS is bad, right? So I think that's the difference with some character is that they can pivot into being strong and relevant in a different manner. That you like. And if this character is not that good anymore and you have to get another character that you didn't even consider, it gets a little annoying. And even if they are fixing old characters, they're not fixing it the best way possible. They're not top tier characters anymore. They just work to have the ability to at least clear the content, but nowhere near as the others. To make yeah. you understand how but who cares? does this, <laughs> they don't care about older characters that <laughs> yeah, much. Obviously. They start making a new character that is better and better make new modes working for this character and as long as the other characters can clear the content they don't care and by clear i can say that the new character can clear it in one turn while the others can clear it in 10 turns and to however uh, that's this not is true actually clear, but they only start look funnily enough the last omoc there was a, a zero cycle from Scylla, so you know uh but yeah the investment you need into your Scylla is way higher right now, what I'm going to say is that I, I think uh, it, it's just a problem with Gacha game. At the end of the day, it's a live service game that's going to keep adding new characters and they want to sell those characters to you. So obviously they're going to get stronger and stronger. Unfortunately, I don't think you can really escape that. Some games are going to be a little bit better. Um, some are going to be worse. I think the monetization system can be make it, make it worse or, or better than others. Like if it's really hard to get a new character, it's going to be painful. Like, if you're playing FGO and you need to have 300 pity to get the character you want, it's, like, obviously a problem. But I think I get a game like Hoyo, like Hoyo games, because you can generally get one character of a new patch, you generally tend to be fine. Looking at them when they actually don't clear content anymore. And then they mm. add a support that brings them back to the meta to probably clear in five turns, for example. They will never be as good as the new characters, but they will go back better than before. And with more time, they will come back to the 10th turn. And at some point, they will need to be replaced. Yep. You'll have a brand new team. So yes, this is the strategy that makes more money, but it's kind of not holding the players really. Because frustration currently isn't as big as we think but it's getting bigger so however needs to be careful in making older characters still viable and not only that I the don't most know, man. important thing for this system to work is for the game to be generous you need to be able to pull one of the two characters that they add in every single update and to be honest we are seeing hsr giving like 120 yeah i think it's pass, possible 110 so it's pretty close but yeah. it might need a little 
little more now. But I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Well, it's close. It's not exactly possible. If you're a little bit unlucky with the 50-50s, you could get shafted. Uh, and you could miss one of the two new characters. That is very true. So I would say, like, if you could secure... If every single patch you would be getting 160 uh, pulls, then you would be guaranteed one of the new characters, right? Uh, but also I understand because if you're lucky, then you'll be able to get every single character on every single patch. And obviously they want to make money, all that, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't know. The reason why there is a third game in this video, and not only a third game, we're actually talking about more than that. But let's start with Tower Fantasy. What Tower Fantasy went with Tower is that every Tower of Degeneracy new character will be a little more powerful, like 10%. There's a little power creep, but if you get one star of this character, there will be a little bit more. And in this game, it's a little easy to get dupes of the other characters. So this is another thing affecting the meta with the gotcha system and tower fantasy went with this new characters are kind of better but this only mattered in one or two modes in the end game in the rest of the modes you actually could clear with any character you wanted and they stayed with this until right. 2.3 when they made a character called fenrir this stupid character was so insanely powerful that you only needed to get one star or one dupe which is very easy to get in tower fantasy and the content was getting a little harder by the time and you kind of needed the character or you're really messing out the character literally does so much damage she gets a whole new ability at c1 and if you use this ability you do an insane amount of damage it doesn't even compare to c0 and you also heal yourself that's okay. without talking about the other dudes that makes her invincible and things like that so the devs were like well shit we have to fix this and players were so frustrated with power creep and tower fantasy and the formula that would they went with is that they added a new type of gear for example if you have artifacts in genshin they for example added a six star yeah artifact. i think this is a good way to go about it and i was very excited about it when the, there were rumors of genshin impact getting, getting like a level 100 uh which was not really like potentially a level 100 like you you could just ascend and by ascending you would go from level 90 to level 100 right and the way i imagined it is that essentially you would get like a special way to get to the next cap and it would give you like a new talent so you could find a way to give like a um a special customized item or a special talent for all the characters to make them relevant again, essentially, right? It's the same way for retrofit, essentially, in, in Azure Lane, or uh, the system they have in PGR, when they can just learn new talent later, later on in the game. And it's just giving a new ability to all the characters so they feel good again. That is, I think this is the best way to go about it if you don't want to create a fully new character or something, right? I think that's a very smart way to go about it. Uh, now that said, uh, they do the same, by the way, in Nikkei, where like all the characters and not relevant characters are getting their favorite item thingy that gives them like new sub abilities to their already existing skills. I think because it's pretty cool. The modes were very hard for free to play. They made a new type of gear that makes everyone way powerful. Everybody became very, very powerful in terms of gear. But when we thought that this was fixed, we remembered that this is an MMO, so you need people to play with you. And whales were crushing everything. So Tower yeah. Fantasy had a good idea to fix this. You already know that I said that you cannot nerf a character in a game, right? In a separate server where you start again and that was what people called tough 2 at the time I'm oh sure my god tower fantasy classic tower fantasy insane 2. that was basically a more hardcore server with harder content with zero difference between the characters if you want the game to be harder and play with any character that you like and whales having only 30 percent difference between them and free to play was an insane idea but it didn't even get to global yet it got to cn at least like five months ago but of course People are upset that they will start again from the start without characters. What about the money that we spent on the initial server? I will say, I think like if you, <laughs> I think a gacha game that's an MMO is always gonna suffer from this, because like especially like when you talk about whales, like you're walking around with whales, you're doing like multiplayer content with whales. Yeah, it's gonna be rough if you're free to play. <laughs> 
I don't know. I, I feel like maybe Gacha and MMO is not necessarily the type of um, game that or genres that match together too well. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I just like being in my own bubble. I, I prefer like a gacha game. I'm happy playing my little gacha games for free. If there's a PvP mode that exists that can give you some reward, I don't try a hard hit. I don't care because I feel like at the end of the game, if someone is at the end of the day, sorry, if someone is gonna win because they put more money in the game, then uh, fucking who cares? And that's why it's always flawed. Whenever you try yeah. to find a solution, you will find a problem in gacha games in terms of meta. If we look to Zenless Zone Zero now, of course this is the first update, limited characters are very powerful. And in weathering ways in two patches, we actually don't know exactly. I actually don't know how exactly weathering ways is trying to go. Because Jinse is more powerful than Jian, and then we got Shanli, which is as powerful as Jian, so it's kinda looking good, no insane power creep and this will take me back to Genshin Impact. What? I mean, there's no insane power creep, but if you compare um, if you compare Shang Li to a character like uh, maybe like Encore, um, well, although actually Encore is kind of a... Uh, yeah, I feel like it's a bit hard to compare right now. Actually, you know what? F fair, very fair, very fair. Why is Genshin Impact the most interesting one in them? Because what could Genshin do is stay on the same thing that they did from 1.0 to 3.0 with adding more endgame. That was the problem in Genshin. No one complained yeah, about Yeah, I mean, they start... They probably complained about some dendro. <laughs> what is so funny about this is that they did make a new endgame, but the endgame limits what character you can bring. So it's not like, oh, now you have to use the older characters. I mean, it's just like, oh, now you need to have more character built. <laughs> and uh, you can't even play the ones you want. Too bad. Thanks. What game can this interesting way of handling the meta can work? Weathering waves. Because you can make the bosses as hard as you can. That's and true. People will still clear it with Shisia. But also they can go the Hawkeye Star Rail route because it makes more money. But of course, as I said before, the Hawkeye Star Rail route makes you need to be generous and has another good thing. Which is if a new player comes to the game, he will already get the best character. So the game will always attract new players. But also if power creep didn't exist anyway the player can get whatever he wants so as you see there is always a problem there is a difference you cannot really say which one is the best you can say that this is better from a business perspective but you cannot say if this is really the best thing even if you follow the genshin route from the start they really need to make an insane story to make you hook to this character and also always make the gameplay of a new character very impressive they can do that for 10 20 30 characters but then they will start adding things that already existed how can you ask a game like league of legends to add a brand new character that doesn't have any single ability that looks like any other character when they have almost two 200 characters in it and see even this has a flaw that's the reason why genshin changed anyway i think i yapped for a long time i don't know i'm actually enjoying making these videos please consider liking this video and if you don't subscribe now you're gonna lose your 50 50 bye bye yeah i think um yeah i don't know dude i i think it's just gacha games are like that and uh, yeah i guess it's I'm not sure if it's flawed. I, I don't think the problem with meta in gacha game, I, I would just say the problem with power creep in, in gacha games, it would be more correct, but that's like just being um, annoying, I guess. Um, I think that's always going to be something that's present. It, it, it's a live service game. They keep adding more characters. I feel like that's always going to be something, right? Uh, it, it's not like... Like, if you look at MMOs where they release new classes, um, they're trying to make everything balanced, right? Especially when it comes to you need to make a team composition with raids and stuff like that. But in a gacha game where the entire monetization system comes from pulling for new characters, they gotta sell them, right? When you look at actual MMOs, you, you, you're you paying for your subscription, right? So that's how they get their money. It's subscription, it's cosmetics. So they have to make every single character, every single class feel good to play. And they have to make them so one class does not feel 
completely terrible compared to the other class of the same um, category, right? They can't make Monk absolutely terrible compared to Assassins or whatever, right? Um, but in the gacha games, they have to. Because if everyone is exactly the same power level, then people... There are some people that will still pull for waifu or host bandos because, you know, animation looks cool or they want the novelty. But a lot of people pull because they want stronger character. Um, as much as everybody says meta doesn't matter, just pick for who you want, a lot of people pull because it's like the strongest characters. Um, and I, I think... That's not truly a big issue. I think that's just part of the genre uh, or part of the m monetization system that is gacha games, right? And if you don't like it, in my opinion, the best way is to just stay away from it, right? Um, because it's probably going to upset you over time until you're fed up with it. Now, I think a lot of people that are free to play think that they should get every single characters and no that's just not the case you don't have to pull for every single characters um some characters just not necessary yuni just came out she's not needed at all uh Jiaoshu is coming out yeah he's gonna be a better support for some characters or some dot teams but he's not absolutely necessary right so there are some jade was not absolutely necessary you don't need jade to kill to clear pure fiction like, you can actually look at the characters or wait for people to release guides. That's all these three banners that you don't have to pull for. Um, so, yeah, it's not really a big deal. Like, if I look at all the recent characters in HSR, let's check Predwin. If I look at all the characters that came out and I only, like, consider, um, like, the five star uh, that came out. Uh, recently, right? I would say Acheron is necessary. I think Firefly is necessary. I think Ruin May was necessary. I think Aventurine, while not necessary, is the best sustain right now, right? Uh, Dr. Ratio is free. He was free. And I think he was not necessary. Black Swan, I think she's very good for Dot Team, but I don't think she was necessary. I think she's also very good for Acheron. But oh, again, she's not needed. There's a lot of options that work just fine. You can just play double sustain elite with like um not sustain sorry but double debuffer uh with pala stuff like that um if you really wanted to play kafka you can still make her function with other characters like gwenaifen sampo etc uh butiel not necessary robin she's a decent support for like um she's a decent support for follow-up attack teams but like in that case you probably want dr ratio that's not necessary to have, so she's also skippable. Sparkle is kind of a better Bronya, but at this point in the game, if you've been playing for a long time, you probably have Bronya already, and she's good enough, right? Unless you really want to make your Impotent Lune like good. Um, yeah, so I mean, who else was like in Pinacone, if you look at it? Jade? Yeah, absolutely not necessary. Like, if you look at just since 2.0, we have Acheron, Firefly, Aventurine, that's three. That's it. Like in four patches or three patches, we have three potentially necessary characters or like must pull characters type of uh, type of deal. It's not that much. It is, yeah, it's really not that much. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't think it's that big of a deal. Did I say 2.3? Are we in 2.4 or 2.3? We're still in 2.3, right? Yeah, we are. Time goes too fast, dude. No, wait. Are we? No, we're in 2.4. We're in 2.4. So, yeah, that's like three characters in four patches, right? So, yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. It, it's just like people want the new stuff and uh, then they get upset when they can't get all of the new characters. But honestly, if you just save for the important one, you'll be fine. Uh, that's why people tell me, oh, you're so lucky, you're so lucky you got the characters you wanted. But like, I've been saving for them like crazy, right? So I, I don't think so. Sometimes, yeah, I win a 50-50, that's great. Or I win two 50-50 in a row. But generally speaking, I always have like a... Uh, 
a B, a plan B if necessary. I think the only not needed pull I did, or like that, the potentially only L I took was pulling for Jade, but I just wanted her because she was pretty. And the other characters I pulled for them because I found them both pretty and very good at the same time, right? Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's really not a big deal. Just like, if you want to pull because the character looks good, then that's fine. And in that case, you're not pulling for meta anyway. So there's no point complaining about fucking, you know, power creep. If you're pulling for meta, then you should have enough resources. It's not like every single character is meta defining. It's just not the case. So yeah, I don't know why it's a big deal. And even if you didn't pull for Firefly, which well, is very strong, um, March 7 actually works in the same team. She can replace Firefly. And yeah, Firefly is T0, but I mean, T1 is good enough. <laughs> it just is. So uh, yeah, I, I think people need to either, if they don't like it, they need to either approach the game a different way, get your games a different way, or it's just not the genre for them. And I definitely understand that. And this is not a solution, but it's the truth. Maybe I'm just being a bit too pessimistic or realistic or cynical or whatever but that's how gacha games are they are predatory they try to push you to pull for all the new characters because that's how they make money and uh that sucks maybe i, I feel like it's not really a big deal uh, i just accept that that's how it functions, and then i plan accordingly uh the end but yeah i'm sorry um i've been yapping for fucking forever that video was 15 minutes long and i've been talking about this shit for 15 minutes so uh yeah my apologies anyway cheers have a good one I'll see you next time. Uh, tell me how I'm wrong in the comments. And uh, yeah, cheers. Mwah.